This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Well, welcome back, Known Podcast. Again, excited for today's episode. And I'm Dustin. I'm the podcast host and excited uh, for today. Thanks for taking some time to join us for today's episode. And you know, burn the ships is a common phrase used to indicate the burning of the past to fully commit to the future. And this is something that we say, you know, a lot. We, t- we talk about, you know, burn the ships, burn the ships, burn the ships, you know, let go of the past in order to fully commit to the future. So you have nothing to fall back to. You have nothing to go back to in your past. And the origin of this phrase I find really fascinating. And in the year 1519, Hernan Cortez arrived in the New World with 600 men. And upon arrival, made history by burning his ships. This sent a clear message to his men. There is no turning back. Two years later, he succeeded in his complete conquest of the Aztec Empire. When when Cortez arrived in what is today Mexico, his soldiers did not want to fight. They were tired of the voyage, and the Aztecs were not friendly. Of course, they weren't very friendly, and it was a strange land. And so Cortez, who wanted to conquer this new land, would have none of it. And to motivate his men, he burned his ships to the waterline, and they were now faced with the stark choice, fight or die right they they didn't have any way to get back home this was now their home this was now their future they had nowhere that they could go and the burning of the ships gives us no choice but to go forward you have nothing to fall back on you are setting your past on fire so that the only way to go is forward into the unknown out of comfort out of what sh- what's normal out of what you know into the unknown into the adventure this is what burning the ships does and i think that as leaders, sometimes we need to let go of the past. We need to let go of what was in order to create what is. We need to let go of the norms. We have to let go of some of the things that we're used to, some of the things we're accustomed to in order to create the beautiful future, to actually live out our vision, to live out the things that we believe we were created for, the things inside of us that the world needs. Those things only come at the cost of what was. And so what we need to do as believers, what we need to do as leaders is we need to learn what is it that I need to let go of? What is the fuel, right? We're going to burn the past in order to create a better future. What is it that we need to burn? And the Bible actually has a story recorded many years before this infamous Cortez moment. It is in 1 Kings 19, and it's the moment Elijah chooses Elisha to take his place as the prophet. He's going to, you know, disciple him and train him, and he's going to learn from him. And this is 1 Kings 19, verse 19 to 21. So Elijah went out and found uh, Elisha, son of Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12th team. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then walked away. Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, then I will go with you. Elijah replied, Go on back, but think about what I have done to you. So Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. He pressed the meat, he passed around the meat to the townspeople and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. Now, this is a moment of somebody burning their ships. This is a moment of somebody saying, I'm not going to let the, my present, I'm not going to let my past distract me from where I'm supposed to be. I'm actually going to go and I'm going to burn my livelihood. I'm going to give it all up. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to not even sell it. He's just going to burn it and then feed the towns. He's like, I'm getting rid of this. I'm not even going to use this for my future. I'm just going to let it go so that way I can step into the future. Step into the calling, step into what I know my future is about, to step into those things. And this is what Elisha does. He says, I'm not going to let my past, I'm not going to let my present, as good as it is, get in the way of where I am going. Right? This is what Elisha does in this moment. 
I'm not going to let this opportunity, I'm not going to let this moment pass me by. I am going forward. And I think we all need to get to a place where we make the same decision. I believe all of us that the future is brighter than the past. I believe for all of us, no matter how old we are, no matter how young we are, no matter how beautiful our present is, no matter how amazing our past was, <coughs> I think our future is going to be better. I truly believe that, that our future is going to be better. And I want to go through today three things that we need to burn. Three things that we need to let go of to step deeper into the future, to let go of once and for all, because they are they can't be a fallback anymore. I think how many times have we said, no, this is it. I'm letting go of this. I'm going to step into my future. I'm not going to let this control me anymore. I'm not going to let this be, you know, the things in my life. I'm going to let go of it. But then all the time it's like, no, I'm going to go back to it. It's comfortable there. It was easier there. I'd rather be there than where I am because I thought this was going to be better, but it's actually harder. It's actually more work. It's actually exhausting. And so what we do is we go back to the things that we already let go of because that's where we're comfortable. And I think for some of us, we need to burn the ships. We need to say, I'm not letting these things control me anymore. I'm actually saying goodbye to them so that way I know I'm not going back. I'm not getting stuck in what was at the cost of what's supposed to be. And so we need to learn to burn some of these things. We burn them as the fuel to kickstart our vision and kickstart our future. It's either going to work or it's not. It's either going to be what we're supposed to do or it's not. But we're never going to find out unless we're willing to burn the ships. And so I'm going to go through three things that we need to burn. Number one is we need to burn the distractions. We need to learn how to burn the things distracting us from going forward. You know, when my family and I, we moved to Edmonton, this is exactly what we had to do. We moved from our home in Calgary. We moved from our church. We moved from our livelihood in Calgary. We had to burn the ships. We had to get rid of the things that would try and call us back when things got hard. When things got hard here, it was like, you know what? You know, maybe we should just go back. You know, do you know we have stuff there? We have things there that we can go back to. Maybe we should just go back to what was because what is and what we're called to and where we are now is a little bit harder than we thought it would be. And so we have to say, no, we sold our house. We said goodbye. And we said, we're going. We packed everything up and we moved. We said, no, we're not going back. We're going here for the long haul. We're willing to put in the work. We're willing to put in the hours in order to create a better future. But it come, came at a cost. We had to burn the things that were distracting us or the things that would easily draw us back. We have to know what is distracting us. What is distracting you? We, need have to, we have to get rid of the things that will try and call us back. The things that are distracting us from stepping into the better, the more beautiful, and the better future. What is distracting you? What is distracting you from living your life fully committed to Jesus? What is distracting you from stepping into your vision to letting go of something so that way you can step into the vision that you have inside of you, the things that you've had in your mind or in your heart for years and years and decades and decades saying, no, maybe one day, maybe one day, maybe one day. What if today is the day to burn the ship of distraction? Saying, I'm not going to let these things get in my way anymore. What is distracting you from having the courage to going forward, you need to burn the distractions. It might mean putting a limit on your social media consumption every day. It might mean putting a limit on how much Disney Plus you devour every week. It might be putting a limit on how much you work every week. It might be putting down the fishing rod so that you can start talking to your holy God. What is distracting you? Because if the enemy can't destroy you, which he'll try and do, he'll try and take your life, he'll try and destroy you. If he can't do that, he's going to do whatever he can to distract you from actually stepping into the things that you're supposed to do. What is distracting you? So that's number one is burn the distractions. Number two, burn the negative words. I think all of us, we've had moments where we've had people tell us we couldn't do it. You know, we're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're not talented enough. You know, I remember one time my cousin, 
and we we went to uh, West Edmonton Mall, which is uh, one of the biggest malls in the world, and it's really close, you know, to our church here in Edmonton. And he came, you know, when we were younger, we were kids, and he, we came, and he wanted to ride the roller coaster at West Edmonton Mall, the Mind Bender, right? And he wanted to ride it, but he was too short. You know, he'd try and go in the line, and they'd have the stick, and they put it on him, and like, no, you're too short, you're too short. But I'm telling you, he was like centimeters short, and he was devastated. Like, I just want to ride this thing. I, I I just want to ride it. I just want to ride it. I just want to ride it. We're like, how, my, 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 our parents were like, how do we make this happen? And so we went to McDonald's. We had a meal. And so what we did is we ended up stuffing uh, McDonald's wrappers in his shoes. And when we did this, it actually raised him you know, a few centimeters. And then we went back to the line. We went through and they measured him. He was tall enough and he was able to go on to the mind bender, go on to the roller coaster. He made a way. Right. And maybe it wasn't the safest thing. Maybe it wasn't what we should have done. You know, maybe it wasn't the safest way for us to do it. But we made a way. And I think for a lot of us, we've all been told things in our life that that, 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 that we can't do it, that we're not attractive enough, we're not good enough, we're not talented enough. We don't have the ed education. We don't have the experience. And so we don't think that we're capable, so we don't even try. We need to burn the negative words that have been spoken over us. We need to burn the things that are telling us you can't do it. We need to burn the things that are telling us we're not good enough. We need to burn those things. We need to burn the negative words. See, God often qualifies the called before he calls the qualified. He often qualifies the called before he calls the qualified. We have to burn the ideas planted in our minds that we aren't good enough, that we can't do it, that we aren't talented enough, that we aren't attractive enough, that we aren't educated enough, that we don't have enough experience, that we're not skilled enough, not smart enough. You get this because we've all been told these things. We need to burn that idea that's been planted in our minds. You can do it, not because of you, but because of who God's called you to be. He'll call you oftentimes before he qualifies you. Because when he calls you, he says, hey, we're going to go and do this. And he says, I'm going to put you through moments where it's hard. I'm going to put you through places that it's growing for you. I'm going to put you through seasons where it's challenging. Not because I hate you, but it's because I love you. And I know that often the seasons we go through, the hardships is what qualifies us to actually see the victory. And so in your life, we need to learn how to burn the negative words that have been spoken over us all of our lives. Burn the negative words. He is calling you higher. He is calling you farther. He is calling you deeper. He will give you what you need. He will give you the courage you need to go forward. We go on his strength. We go on his words. We go with his heart. We go without his love. Burn the things holding you back. Burn the words that are holding you captive to your past and not the adventurer in your future. When we start to let go of the negative words and understand who God says we are, when we actually understand that God is calling us, whether we're qualified or not, that qualification will come. He doesn't just leave us unqualified. He doesn't just say go and then say good luck. He says, I'm sending you and I'm going to qualify you. I'm going to make you the person. I'm going to make you the leader. I'm going to make you the parent. I'm going to make you the son that you need to be in order to be successful in this moment. It might be hard. It might be challenging, but we have to burn the ships of the negative words that has been spoken over us. Burn it. Don't go back to it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have a moment where you finally find success and then you're going to have failure. You're going to be like, oh yeah, I remember my teacher back in third grade. I remember what they said to me. I'm going to remember what my dad told me when I was 18 and he told me I was no good. I, I couldn't do it. I was never going to make a living. I was never going to find a spouse, right? We need to let go and burn the negative words that have been spoken over us. If we do this, if we learn how to let go and burn those things, I'm telling you, the future is so bright because we're going to know who we are and we're, chat, we're the children of a king. We're the children of God. And he's saying, I'm going to qualify you. I'm going to make you good. I'm going to make you, I'm going to perfect you. I'm going to make you good. I'm going to qualify you for the purpose, for the vision, for the future. We need to burn the negative things that people have said over us and start to understand and believe who God says we are. That is when we will start to step into the future, when we realize that what people have said to us, what people have said about us is not who we are. It's who God says we are that matters. 
burn the ships of the negative words. And then the last one, again, number one was burn the distractions. Number two, burn the negative words. And number three, burn the shiny things. Who Burn the shiny things. You know, oftentimes the burning of the ships is the burning of something valuable, the burning of something good. However, the future will come at a cost every single time. Remember Elisha. He had to burn his plows. And it's not just a couple of plows. He had 12 teams of oxen and plows. This dude was building a plowing empire. A plowing empire. He was making money. He was doing very well for himself. Yet he went and said, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I know the future is better. This might seem shiny. It might seem good. But he said, I'm willing to sacrifice the good on the altar of the best. I'm going to sacrifice the good in order to step into the best that I have for my life. In order to get into the vision or the future that I see, I need to burn the good in order to see the best. So this is what Elisha was thinking in his eyes. The best is oftentimes on the other side of good. We have to be in tune with what God is speaking and seek good counsel and follow God's voice. Often the hardest things to sacrifice, and we know this, are the good things, right? The hardest things for us to sacrifice are the things that are making us money, the things that are building our fame, the things that are building our self-esteem, those are very hard to let go of. But oftentimes the shiny things are actually the things distracting us from our future, from our vision, from where we're supposed to be. What is distracting you? What are the shiny things in your life that seem good and they probably are good? They're building your income. They're building your self-esteem. They're building your following, but it's not what you're supposed to be doing. It's not where you're supposed to be. We need to learn how to burn the shiny things. Often the hardest things to sacrifice are the good things. And Beth and I had a lot of good things happening in Calgary. We were part of a successful church. We were running a successful uh, youth program. We just had a child. We had just bought our first ever house just a year earlier. Yet it wasn't best. It was good, and it was beautiful, and it was hard to leave. It was hard to let go. It was hard to burn the ship, but we had to do it to step into the best and the beautiful that God had for us. It was shiny. It was amazing. It was comfortable. We knew what was going on. We knew it all, yet it wasn't where we were supposed to be. The shiny things will always try and sway you to come back trick you into thinking that the past was better. Remember when things were comfortable. Remember when things were consistent. Remember when you knew everything. Remember when you when you knew where to park. Remember when you had a great title. Remember when things were easier. Do you, do you remember? And this is what the shiny things say. The future isn't easy. The future comes at the cost of the past. When we burn the ships, we say, heck with the past. I am going forward no matter the cost. I can't go back because I have already sacrificed the past on the altar of the future. I have already sacrificed the past on the altar of the future saying, you know what? This might be good. But what's in front of me is better, but it's going to cost us something. We have to burn the shiny things in our lives. You know, those are the th- just three of the things that we need to learn how to burn. But I want to go through one thing that we don't burn. And this is, we, this is what I really wanted you to key in on. We burn the ships, but don't burn the people. Burn the ships, but don't burn the people. Burn the ships. Do not burn the people. We never burn people. Great people don't burn bad people. This doesn't mean we allow bad people to influence us or that we let them walk all over us. We might not even have a relationship with them, but the bridge to them we will never burn. We will never burn human connection. We will never be people who burn it. God can change people, and I truly, truly believe this. Our responsibility is to not gossip, to talk highly of people and respect people, whether they deserve it or not. You know, Jesus, right, he was betrayed by his best friends. He was, his best friends ran away. 
They abandoned him to stuff to suffer practically alone on the cross, yet he never made fun of them and he never talked poorly about them. It's not like he went to John one day and said, yo, that Judas guy, what a horrible dude. What a horrible guy that was. And don't get me started on old Peter. Ooh, do not get me started on Peter. Deny me three times? Good luck, man. No, Jesus never did this. He never did those things. No, he said, here are my wounds. Here I am. Do you believe who I am now? Now I'm sending you to change the world. We don't burn people. We don't burn the bridges to people. Yes, they might hurt us, and we, that doesn't, again, mean we don't have to have a relationship with them, maybe, but God can change people. We don't burn the ships, or we don't burn the, the bridges. Why? Because people might have an opportunity to come back, and we need to be willing to say, yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here for you. We burn the ships, but that does not mean we burn the bridges. We burn the ships. We're saying, I'm not going back to my past, but if you're willing to come with me into my future— you're welcome anytime. But I'm not going back to the past. I've burned those ships, but I'm not going to burn the bridge of connection. You are welcome to join me on the journey into the future anytime you want. Anytime you want, you are welcome to join me as we step into the future. As we learn to burn the ships, let us let go of the things tying us down and step into the great things God has in store for us. Your future is comes at the cost of your past. We burn the ships to get rid of the distractions, quiet the negative voices, burn the negative voices, and not let the past, not let the shiny things draw us back in. To be great leaders, to be great parents, we do not let the past control us. We burn the ships. Yes, it was painful. Yes, it was hard. Maybe it was even good, but we say, no, that is not going to distract me. That is not going to get in the way of where I am going. I am burning the ships, but I am not burning the bridges to people. I'm going into the future. You're welcome to join me, but I am not stepping a foot back in my past. I'm not stepping a foot back. Why? Because I burned it. It's already been sacrificed of the, on the altar of my future, so I'm going forward. You know, uh, I'm really excited. You know, I truly believe that this is, can be really helpful uh, for us as it is for me. This is a journey that I've been on. You're learning how to let go of the past, to let go of the things trying to distract me, let go of some of the things that are good in order to step into the future that God has for me, the future that God has called me into. And I believe that you can do this. And I believe that we can do this together. Thank you for joining us today for The Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.